Hello, of course, it's Nick Dutch back again one more time. Hi there, how's it going? I've been asked about the subject of reincarnation. It crops up rather a lot. And, you know, that's a religious question, you know. You know, whether someone believes in reincarnation. Well, maybe, maybe it happens sometimes, maybe it doesn't happen sometimes. If you're talking about an incredibly complex interaction of universal forces, hypothetical universal forces, then maybe it does happen sometimes, and maybe it, you know, it doesn't happen other times. Maybe there's other places to go to if you... Or maybe your entire being splits up into lots of different, different separate blobs and some goes to reincarnation, some goes towards um, some other place where you can learn and some goes off here and there and everywhere. I mean, that's not a possibility. Um, the fact of the matter is all the different spiritual cultures throughout history have come out with a different interpretation as to what actually happens when you die. Sure, there are some people who've made claims that they were born knowing how to read, for instance, and therefore from that point of view, they therefore developed a belief in reincarnation. And I heard a story of actually um, a, Christian, a Christian priest who actually thought that way. So I don't think that any particular culture, you know, there are people who say that they are Christians or Buddhists or Muslims or Hindus or Sikhs or Wiccans and all the rest of that. But when you look at an individual's point of view, it won't necessarily tie in completely with what you would assume that that point of view is actually about. Okay, so that's why there's always like, you know, extra questions and very few answers. Okay. It's just the way that things are, realistically speaking. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming now that the individual who asked me about reincarnation was looking to see whether I had similar views to see whether they could, like, you know, really, like, bond with me in a kind of, like, internet y youtube kind of way, which is obviously cool, and also to corroborate their own points of view. But... Although I, I occasionally sort of like go into that kind of stuff. I mean, when it comes to like life after death, we're going to have to sort that out when we get there. And whilst we're here, we just got to be the best that we can be and carry on growing and improving ourselves using whatever tools and techniques we can lay our hands on. Anything from, you know, self-development books, religious books, spiritual books, all that kind of stuff. Spiritual healing is a great source of self-analytical uh, uh, ideas from which... You know, I you know I do a lot of reflection for myself personally from that from that school of thought, uh, as well as for some of the people that I deal with on a regular basis. Thanks to my work, you know, I mean, it, but you, you can actually use the kind of like all the states of consciousness associated with both religion and occultism as a tool for further and deeper introspection. All right, you, you can actually do that, which is useful for some people, but also, you know, some people can go in a bit too deep and like maybe they'll come across something that might be a little unwholesome because we're humans. OK, we've got like the uh, frontal cortex and we've got the middle brain and we've got the hind brain and all that kind of stuff. So essentially inside all of us, there's a more primitive animal. And if you dig too deep inside yourself, you will come across primitive stuff because we're all very primitive. You know, I mean, some people say, well, what are you, you know, why don't you be what you are naturally? Well, the question is, what the hell does that mean? Hmm? Because you've all got like the super ego, ego and id, as was mentioned in Freudian psychodynamics. You know, we've got these three different personalities inside ourselves who are all like vying for, you know, attention or whatever. Uh, and so there isn't really a singular um, self, okay? So the idea of reincarnation could actually be seen as being a stage of personal growth to the point whereby you have some kind of uh, spiritual revelation. Or you could go through sufficient growth to change the actual dynamic of your own brain. All right, these things. So reincarnation could be an analogy to uh, a change of mind, thought, uh, behavior, understanding, and so on and so forth. I mean, there is this strong, like, argument that a lot of ideas from religions and spirituality could, in fact, be analogies to change and growth. Okay, so if you are looking or, or reading in the right, like, tone of mind, or reading from the right theological perspective or political perspective or psychological perspective when you're reading anything to do with 
occultism or religion or spirituality or the new age or meditation or whatever you can see things uh, there which could do you either good or harm depending upon how good your understanding of those ideas were originally I know none of this discussion will connect you directly to whether reincarnation is fact or fiction or indeed whether it's something which is worth um, investing you know a large quantity of belief in but either way I think it is important to look at these schools of thought from many points of view at once okay or not 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 at once but during different phases of your analysis you don't have to rush into it you know because you can have one particular concept and you can then try and break it down so let's say the eru you know life death rebirth sort of thing uh, that can be seen as like going through very different phases of life, you know, your childhood, your adolescence, your young adulthood, your older adulthood, then old age, and so on and so forth, or moving from one social group to another one, you know, so it's not literally, okay, you die, you go to the other side, you sort of like learn what you have to learn there, then you come back as something else. It could just be a question of progression, you know, from one thing to another or building up on what you've already got or like the Christians say from glory to glory which basically just means growing more and more and more uh, so there's different ways of looking at it okay or, or maybe the you know the idea of the like purgatory is like a time of learning some people think that some forms of madness are in fact an attempt to do self-discovery through lowering the brainwave frequencies going into that state of madness trying to find an answer and then coming out of it and developing clarity of thought afterwards that's just a, a hypothesis i would not recommend to anybody to go mad deliberately so that you can try and find an answer and if you're looking for that kind of experience with the drugs basically don't because i strongly think that that is a bad thing to do you know i mean because I've seen evidence it's a bad thing to do. You're much better off just doing standard, straightforward, you know, ordinary, normal, everyday kind of meditation, religion and spirituality rather than blowing your brains out with drugs or alcohol. So that's that's my point of view. The, the, the I I would say that the allegorical interpretation is the most workable. Okay, as far as is there reincarnation after death, there may be. Now, with, with some people who approach me and say, Nick, precisely what were you in your previous life? I can't talk to that sort of person like I'm talking to you now, trying to give you a deeper understanding of the idea of reincarnation, because some people are dogmatic about their belief in reincarnation. So I confess. I sometimes play with them and I tell them that I was um, someone poor who was very unfortunate, had an accident and ended up dying young because most people think they were someone rich or famous, you know, because people have a more blown up, you know, understanding of what they could have been in the previous life, like, um, I don't know, the hairdresser who thinks she was Cleopatra or maybe the... Um, 11 grand a year accounts assistants who's still at 11 grand a year after being in the trade for 25 years who thinks that he was Tutankhamun or maybe the person who collects the shopping trolleys in the supermarket thinks that oh he really was someone famous he was like Isaac Newton or someone crazy like that or uh, you know Louis the 14th so I say I was the son of a wheelwright and I was learning the trail, the trade of a man who makes the wheels for the carts and I had an industrial injury when I was just 11 and I couldn't do any work. I uh, bashed my hand with a hammer and so my hand was destroyed and I couldn't do any form of manual work afterwards and I died as a beggar in the streets by about the age 16. Uh, which, of course, is a very sad story, but it turns the mythology of, oh, you must have been someone famous, 
upside down because I um, I think it's I think it's important to challenge the idea. I mean, if there if there were millions and billions of people who were alive before you were, what is the chances that you are actually the reincarnation of someone rich or famous or monastic or highly spiritual and highly evolved and a ascended master? Uh, what the fuck ever, you know, what, what is the chances of that happening? Considering that most of the population would have been um, the kids who died in the factories in the Industrial Revolution, or the people who, who are in an era of unclean water could only get their hands on beer, which was the only way of um, preserving water, and had too much of it and died at the age 15 or 20, or or someone who ended up contracting one of the old plagues and ended up dying of that, or, you know, our history was pretty diabolical prior to the development of good medicine, for instance. Okay? So, I try and turn the issue on its head, and I give a story. I mean, I actually think there may, may be something to that, because I had a few dreams along those lines. Were they reincarnation dreams? Maybe. But also, maybe not. Maybe it was in an indication of like self-esteem and the way I saw myself at the time. or I don't know. The fact of the matter is, it was a strange dream, and it led me to that way of thinking. But it's important that I tell that story in order to try and turn the mythology of the I must have been a famous person, yes... Just like all the kind of like poor quality people would say, all right, to turn that upside down. Because there's no point in like, oh right, so if you if you were in charge of like the French Resistance, then I would must have been one of the aristocrats or some, you know, or someone in like Birmingham who's convinced he's Jesus or whatever and someone else in edinburgh who's convinced that he's judas and you know I mean, how many people in this world at the same time think they were jesus why don't they just all get together and like have a crucifixion party yet i think that will be never mind i'm just um i'm just pulling your leg there oh god but you know it, it's strange it's a very strange subject could there be some truth to it yes there could. Can we be sure? No, we can't. In my humble opinion. Over to you, dear viewer.